Welcome to the results visualization portion of the tutorial. Simple IDK itself is not a visualization toolkit, but it provides a significant number of components that allow creation of meaningful images illustrating the results of your segmentation and registration algorithms. These are readily used in publications for qualitative results evaluation. In this notebook, we will over, give an overview of uh, many of these filters and the considerations uh, that you need to take when you're creating images and saving them. So let's start uh, looking at the code here. Uh, the first function, and this is uh, pretty important, is make isotropic. Most uh, of the image formats that you will be using to uh, embed in your publications expect the uh, pixels to be isotropic. In medical and microscopy images, this is not the case. Usually they are isotropic on the axial slice, but uh, on the other axes, the uh, image spacing is not isotropic, and it's good to make it isotropic for uh, easy uh, display and saving in these image formats such as JPEG, PNG, and many others. So what, are, what does this function do? If uh, the spacing, if the original image was isotropic, essentially does nothing, returns a copy of the original image. If uh, the original spacing was not isotropic, uh, we make an arbitrary decision of taking the minimal spacing in the original image, replicating that, and resampling the original image uh, using the uh, minimal spacing between pixels. So make isotropic, that's something you'll probably do every time before you save your images to a, a file. Now, to combine two images, there are several options that we can uh, take. And the first is just use alpha blending, where we weigh the uh, different images and uh, using different uh, values and combine that. We can use a checkerboard pattern where we take uh, regions from one image, regions from the other, and combine those next to each other to create a checkerboard-like pattern. And then we can take if we're working with scalar images, we can take the values from one image and the values from the other, use those and create a color image which uh, combines the two. Uh, and we'll start by just reading our uh, two images. And one thing to note in medical imaging is that you're dealing with high dynamic range images and most of the uh, formats that you will use to embed images in your papers. And again, if, uh, if you're using a monitor, in the end, you have to uh, map your high dynamic range to a lower dynamic range. And that's up to you what is the dynamic range that you see fit. So this uh, UI allows you to play around with the dynamic range. Let's take the MR here. We're changing the dynamic range. We look, that looks okay to us. And here we have the CT. CT will do, uh, we'll take this region, which essentially is the bony region. And now we've identified what is the window level and the range that we want to use. And here we can do the mapping. Uh, essentially, this is, uh, this is, preset because I have the window minimum at 2, minimum window maximum at 6, 5, 7. And let's use the new values that we just looked at. So I'll set this to 221 and this to 657. And here I'll uh, do minus 112, 112 and 1126 which is the maximum. So we've remapped those intensities to 0, 255, which is, uh, these are the values that uh, we can save uh, into a, a regular file. Again, PNG, JPEG, whatever format you like. And now alpha blending, this is just the standard formulation of alpha blending where we take the intensity from one image, scale it, uh, 
1 minus the alpha value again scaling and alpha is between 0 and 1 inclusive and uh, what the code below also allows is the use of uh, masks so this is generally the naive approaches you apply these scalars to the whole image to the whole uh, image one the, this scalar uh, scales all the values in image two but we could uh, apply this scalar only to certain regions in image one and only to certain regions in image two and then do the blending because if we're taking the background from uh, image one and there is foreground from image two overlaid onto that we actually don't want uh, the background from image one because that's just uh, modifying the intensity values there uh, without contributing any inf real information so this uh, alpha blending function does all of that uh, where it uh, allows you to specify the images specify masks on these images and then uh, do the blending additionally because we're working with 3d volumes and we would like to display them on a 2d monitor you could either do volume rendering that is outside of the scope of simple itk at the end of this notebook we'll show you how you could do that uh, too within the notebook but this is outside the scope of uh, simple ITK. But with simple ITK, you can essentially take the volume slices, tile them, and create a 2D image representing that original volume. So what we do here is we use various uh, approaches to the alpha blending with different masks and settings uh, on them, and then uh, tile the whole uh, each of these into a one a 2D image and at the end of that we create a foie volume just for current uh, display purposes which is done here we just take those 2D images and stack them one on top of the other and let's see how that looks and what I want you to pay attention to is that this is actually the same image just different uh, approaches to alpha blending and an interesting uh, aspect is that it feels like there is motion happening here and that's just intensity modifications happening so again this is a uh, bone is coming from the CT more prominently and soft tissue is coming from the MR and that's the classic combination of uh, why you do registration where you're combining information from two modalities so this is alpha blending with masks and the other option as I talked earlier you can do a checkerboard where we're taking pieces from one image pieces from the other image and then combining them and this is how it looks this is with using the original intensities without mapping them and you can see the background in the MR and the background in the CT are actually a uh, very different and they're very distracting here because you get this these changes which actually mean nothing and uh, when we rescale the intensities they uh, look u more uniform uh, again we used in this case in the checkerboard here it's a four by four by four uh, that's the su that's how we want to divide our big image so it's just one two three four on x on y excuse me one two three four on y and the same thing we have on z uh, we did a, a finer a, a, a checkerboard on uh, the rescaled images we can do a four by four let's see how that looks and again similar to this but you don't see these weird uh, changes in the background because the intensities were pre-scaled but again it's harder to see any continuity these images are not registered these are just overlaid one on top of the other and this is what you see here okay and finally as I said we can take the because these are scalar images we can take 
each channel there and combine them into a three channel image. Now, how we do these, uh, and those represent colors. Now, how to do that, that's a, a different uh, subject and has to do with human perception. So, we can map them in a variety of ways. Here we just did R, G, and here we uh, created them, used the two channels to, in a magenta green scheme and here an orange blue scheme. Now, uh, it's important to note, to me, I'm not colorblind. All of these seem fine, uh, I have no issue, but uh, colorblind, to them, uh, red and green, that's a really bad choice. Uh, please avoid that. Uh, human perception studies have shown it's just, it appears the same. So they don't see the differences. If you're colorblind, you won't, uh, you're probably struggling to see the differences on this image. These are uh, more uh, visible to uh, people that are not colorblind and to people that are colorblind, they will uh, see the differences here. And again, this is just a mapping. Uh, compare this, for instance, let's go back to our alpha blended. You can see that no matter what choice we made here, not the best, you know, it's not that clear the overlay here between the uh, images versus here where it's striking, at least to me. Again, it, this is subjective perception. At least the uh, magenta green differences are very striking. Okay, now if we need to uh, overlap a scalar image onto another using a color map, we have scalar to RGB color map image filter. And then on top of that, you can use alpha blending with uh, one of the uh, different approaches uh, there. And we can do alpha blending on a per pixel uh, basis. So what are the differences? With alpha blending, the basic is you apply the same scaling to the whole image, uh, to each of these whole images. With a mask, it's you're applying uh, this constant scaling to a specific region and you have a hard cutoff. Per pixel alpha just means that you have a weight per every pixel. So you could have a gradual uh, mixing between the two images versus a hard cutoff imposed by a mask. So again, all of these options are available as you can see here in the code, obviously. So this is how it looks with uh, the basic. Let's try a per pixel and I'll leave the uh, per pixel alpha and that looks very very different again we're a uh, match we're overlaying exactly the same data so you can understand this essentially highlights the uh, that your choices of how to visualize your results actually have a significant effect on the impression you leave on your reader uh, because these, the two images that uh, we just, uh, two choices of how to display exactly the same data really create different uh, impressions. Again, uh, you can play around with the mask, basic, per pixel alpha, uh, and uh, overlay your images. Now, uh, when we want to combine a, uh, this is now we're uh, combining an image and a segmentation. In the previous, all the previous result uh, examples showed how to combine two images. Uh, each of them was, uh, they, they were uh, commensurate in that uh, image one and image two uh, didn't have any specific meaning to them. It's just two images. Here, we have an original image and we want to overlay a segmentation on it. Now, we can map the segmentation labels to a color image and then alpha blend. So we're back to, uh, as good mathematicians, we're back to our original problem of alpha blending after we map the uh, in a segmentation image to a label map image, to a color image, excuse me. And 
we can overlay the segmentation boundaries onto the original image. Sometimes that is clearer because it's uh, the alpha blending is a bit might, might be a bit distracting. So uh, what we took here is the poppy model uh, where we already have the segmentation and let's take a look at what we have there and this is our original image and we can obviously window level it because it's a high dynamic range CT image and all of these are tied together so uh, you can see that uh, the image the raw segmentation labels which let's see lung is 2 body is 0 which is a unique choice. My uh, default choice of zero is usually background, and in this case, background is one. But uh, we can uh, set the colors for the uh, label map, uh, and that is through the label to RGB uh, filter. That's pretty straightforward, and you know what you're doing. It says map the label to an RGB value, and that's what is being done here but uh, in this case again we need to map the uh, high dynamic range to low dynamic range before working with it so that we have good control of what we're disp actually displaying and we take the central slice and In this case, we need to make it isotropic because we're taking a coronal slice. And in the coronal direction, the images are uh, not isotropic. So again, back to the uh, basics of when we want to save the images in a, a, a standard PNG JPEG format, they need to be isotropic. And when we're doing the interpolation, because this is a label image, we're using nearest neighbor. We do not want to introduce any other labels other than 0, 1, 2. So we use nearest neighbor. And finally, just write this bunch of images to, uh, uh, to this image, excuse me, to uh, the uh, coronal segmentation.png. Okay, so. How do we uh, overlay uh, the images? Uh, the how do we map uh, the uh, labels to a set of colors that we decide, not that simple ITK decides for us. It's default settings. Well, we can specify uh, color maps using RGB color space, and they're just strung together. So, for uh, label zero. We have RGB, so it's red. So uh, label one, RGB, so essentially uh, green. So we have red, green, and that's it. So uh, again, you can string them together. It's nicer if you give them names. So in this case, I gave this, uh, this is a pretty uh, uh, garish color map, but that's intentional, so I'm using pink green and gold but uh, I gave them names so when I give the color map I know that I'm using pink green and gold just stringing them together uh, I have no chance of knowing what that this is pink this is green this is green yes I'll, I'll know but that this is gold and uh, no chance so let's see what happens with that and yes pink <laughs> oops And these are uh, overlaid onto uh, the two images and using the two color maps. So I have uh, the, uh, this is my garish color map and uh, versus just using the default color map that uh, looks nicer in some sense, but uh, I didn't control it. It was whatever the defaults are for simple ITK. I didn't set those. Here I set them. Yes, again, as I said, intentionally, this is pretty ugly, but you get the feel of, okay, this is what I want to set. I can decide on my colors, set them, and indeed I get what I want. So body's pink, 
lungs are gold and background is green okay so let's move on again eh, that might be too distracting and this is really in this case really this is way too distracting I may want to just uh, overlay uh, my uh, labels uh, using uh, contours so uh, let's do that these are the uh, labels overlaid and you can see that uh, there might be uh, issues where the labels these are at the boundaries and if I'm drawing just the contours so which one wins so I'm getting here in the uh, re red and green when they're overlaid onto each other I'm getting a yellow and that's not really what I want because uh, I want to retain my three original labels so again here I'm getting between uh, again a combination of two labels here at this boundary so that's not exactly uh, great again you can control this so you need to set uh, which one which contour should uh, overlap overlay on top of which and that's something that you can do here we show how to uh, essentially control the contours themselves better the contour will be opaque I can change that to any value between 0 and 1 the contour thickness I can control that and that's pretty important when you're uh, embedding it into a paper you might want thicker contours because when it's printed uh, it's not that clear and how much to increase that uh, contour specifying my color map this is what I know I don't I'm not using any defaults and this is how it looks so uh, much better in terms of visualization I can see the original image it's clear what's the original it's clear where the boundaries are versus this which uh, artistically might be uh, nice but uh, our goal is to in science is to convey information clearly and concisely this seems to be much better again uh, you're up to your tastes finally comparing two segmentations we can uh, look at the differences of the two segmentations and uh, here I'm artificially creating a, a different segmentation from an original one and then uh, looking at the difference between uh, the two and this is what we get so one and two and let's look at the difference and we wrote that to a disk and that's pretty much it for what simple ITK can give you uh, now uh, one thing that is interesting and that's for a different toolkit it's for the ITK widgets package highly recommended for a uh, really really nice uh, visualizations which let's take a look at that what can I do and this is volume rendering so it takes a bit more time so but this is that uh, same data set and this is the lung and this is uh, uh, the uh, uh, whole image itself so this is just the uh, lung uh, region and you can interact with these and they're linked oops uh, this is going all over the place but that's fine again you interact with them and you can save an image screenshot of this or take a screenshot of that region and then you can save your nice volume rendering again uh, up to your taste you can play around with the settings and everything for these different uh, volumes but again for further information go to the ITK widgets package and see how you can uh, create really uh, stunning images with volume rendering simple ITK you can be informative and save your uh, imaging data results and with that you've come to the end of the uh, simple ITK tutorial hope you enjoy the toolkit